guys, so today I'm at Swim to Shore Swim School with Miss Kylie, who is actually Oliver's swim instructor. He's doing so good in class. I'm glad you guys decided to come here. He's doing awesome. Thank you, yay. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about swim school, why it's important, and just some cool little facts about learning to swim at a young age. So I put Oliver in swim school shortly after he turned six months. I felt like it was really important at that age. Um, I have a lot of family members who swim. I wanted to really, you know, get like the mommy and me time, that bonding experience. But most importantly, we're in California. There's a lot of pools. And I wanted to do the, you know, the safety aspect of swimming. I wanted him to be safe around pools. And so that's mainly why I started swim school. All right, so Kylie, walk me through this. Why is it so important for babies to attend swim school? And what age is a good age for them to start doing that? We recommend them to start as early as possible, but starting them at any time is beneficial, especially like you said, being in Southern California with lots of water around, you always want to know how to swim. Yeah, definitely. So I started around six months, and I feel like he even could have started earlier if I want, if I had the chance. So, Like we said, um, living in Southern California, you want to make sure you get them in because it is a life-saving skill. Children under the age of five, the number one um, cause of death is drowning, especially in shallow water. Oh, wow, that's so very interesting. To start them as early as possible is the best. Cool. All right, so what are some things that you teach in, during swim school, and how do you, you know, translate those into the real world, you know, situations? We teach them in case they ever get pushed in or fall into pool to go right to their back to get safe and call for help. Um, you don't want to teach them the pop-up method where they lift their head up because a lot of times they'll suck in water that way. But if you teach them to roll to their back to get safe, you can see them. It gives it buys them extra seconds on their back too. You can also identify where they're at. So if they do fall in by accident, you can see where they're at. They can also call for help and start getting themselves to the wall to get safe. Mm -hmm. We also um, teach them to get comfortable going underneath the water to start those beginning freestyle motions as well as the other competitive strokes. But also we teach them to make sure mom and dad are waiting um, for them and that the child's waiting too so they're not jumping in unexpectedly without you guys mm -hmm. seeing them. Mm -hmm. I see, okay. So mainly you're teaching them to be comfortable in the water, learn to flip to their back and get safely out of the pool or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are some other benefits to being in a swim class? It's good for them to be in a swim class too because they're getting used to being around other kids. So socialization, so that when they start going to school, they know how to be other around other kids, especially mm -hmm. if they are an only child. Other benefits too are preparation for swim team, learning how to be part of the team, mm -hmm. as well as um, gaining an understanding of listening to, to a teacher and also all those safety skills. Cool, yeah, I definitely love the you know, the mommy and me time, like the bonding experience, and him just having fun in the pool. Yeah. I feel like it's so important for them to be safe, but it's also really important for them to love the water. Yes. We don't want them scared in the water. Yeah, definitely. So how does the class progress as the child gets older? Um, we start them, obviously, with the younger ones getting comfortable in the water and getting familiar with it, too. But as they get older, we start teaching them harder things. So everything's built upon our safety skills, so getting them safe on their back and into the wall. But also then we start preparing them for swim team, so learning big arms and big kicks, so our beginning freestyle motion, and then progressing more towards cleaning up strokes for competitive swim if they choose to do that in cool. the future. Cool. Yeah, I can't wait for that part. I can't wait for him to obviously be safe and then do something more fun like mm -hmm. swim team, and I, I that just sounds like so much fun. All right, so next I'm going to ask you a couple questions that I got from my viewers. Erin Bunny says, with swim class, how early could you see your baby or very young child swimming on his own unassisted? Um, every child's totally different. We definitely prepare them to get safe and then move on to swimming skills. But the more comfortable they are in the water, the better, and the more time you spend in the pool mm -hmm. and mo more exposure you give them, the quicker you'll see progression too. Okay. I think the goal is not necessarily to let them swim unassisted, but to just be able to see them flip to their back and, you know, get to the end. Um, I think I heard someone saying that they started their child around four months and they were very, very dedicated. Yes. Almost going to like lots of swim time stuff and they said something about maybe being able to swim unassisted around a year and a half. Yeah. Does that sound about right? Yeah. There's definitely kids that can swim earlier, but like it's, I said, the more dedication you have and the more time you spend in the pool with them, the more progression you'll mm -hmm. see, as well as being consistent to going to those swim classes. Yeah. And definitely, obviously, every child is different, and depending on how comfortable they are and their background and stuff like that, I think that's going to depend yeah, on definitely. how comfortable they are. Cassidy Scollin actually had a question about flotation Ooh. devices. Ooh. Are they good to use? Um, we prefer that they don't use them. You can use them for a limited time, like how Oliver is in here now. However, we're keeping them on his stomach to remain um, buoyant in the water, but with the flotation devices, it gives them a false sense of security, as well as sometimes the parents won't be able, or will use it kind of as a way to move away from the child a little too far. 
and then it causes them not to be buoyant so much on their stomach or their back, but more up and down in the water. Interesting, okay. All right, next question is from Renee Jennings, and she says, saltwater pools or chlorine is one preferred when teaching a baby to swim? As long as both pools are maintained, whether it's chlorine or salt, as long as you're maintaining it, then yes, it's fine. Um, but always check with your pediatrician too, because every skin for kids are different. I know a lot of moms are worried about that chlorine, but I feel like you guys don't even put a ton of chlorine in the pool. No, and it's always monitored too. So as long as they're maintaining and monitoring the levels in the pool too, they're totally fine. All right, next question is from Rachel Simmons, and she says, do you feel babies have to be taught to swim underwater? As a parent, this scares me, and I definitely wouldn't do it in intentionally. The objective isn't for them to be swimming underwater. We want them comfortable underwater so that if they do fall in or get pushed in that they don't panic so mm -hmm. they are familiar with it. Um, but we definitely want to submerge them a little bit at a time. We don't want to do it right away. We want to gently ease them into it, whether it's dumping a cup of water on their head, like sprinkling it on them, mm -hmm. or whether it's slowly gliding them and getting their face wet. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to push in that way, but we don't necessarily teach them unassisted swimming yeah. underwater. And technically they say that he's ready or they're ready to go under around six months. Yeah. So you can start in easing them into it. Yes. Last question is from Alexandra and she says, if I look for a baby swim class, what should I make sure is included? What are the most important things to learn or practice? You want to make sure that your instructors, depending on what school you choose, that they're certified but also knowledgeable instructors too, mm -hmm. that they'll be able to effectively communicate their progress in areas they need to work on. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to make sure you're going to a school that's going to teach them to roll right to their back to get safe and call for help mm -hmm. um, versus, like we talked about earlier, the pop-up method where they could potentially suck in water. I just so enjoyed it. I feel like Oliver loves it, which is obviously like my number one thing is seeing mm -hmm. his face when he gets in the water, seeing as they, um, you know, you guys sing songs and stuff. I love that part of it. But I do just want to urge you guys, if you have a child, teaching them to swim is so important. Like she said earlier in the video that you said children under five. Under the age of five, the drowning is the number one cause of death, especially in shallow water. And that's so scary. Check out Swim to Shore. They are awesome, awesome school. You guys should definitely check them out. You know, our main purpose of this video is to just urge parents that this is important and it's a, it's a life-saving skill, as they say. All right, so thank you so much, Kylie, for joining us. I've had so much fun and I am so excited to see Oliver, you know, progress through the classes and go through swim team maybe one time at some point. And so just thank you so much for actually joining of us. Of course, thanks for having me. Me. All right, guys, thumbs up this video if you learned something new, and leave in the comments when your child learned to swim and when you felt that was important. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Protects it so that if he bites the um, fabric, it's obviously not going to damage the crib. Okay, so I can't do a full in-depth video on how I made it, but I can kind of walk you through it. Plus, I'm going to have the blog post that I followed in the description, so you can check that out. Um, but first off, you're going to need two different fabrics, um, one for the side that you want to show and then one for the backing. And then you're also going to 